Good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in uh, foggy California. Uh, here, I'm going to show you. I, uh, I live in the, what's called the Central Valley of California. Yeah, it runs, the Central Valley runs from, oh, Redding in the north up to Bakersfield, down to Bakersfield in the south. And, um... It's about 400 miles. It's a big valley, and it's probably about 40, 50 miles wide. And uh, we only have two seasons here in the Central Valley. Hot and dusty and cold and foggy. So cold and foggy season has started. So lucky us. Look at that. Anyway, let's get back in here. It's only marginally less cold. Um, I'm making the video from home because I was only at work for like, sorry about all the bad photography here. I don't even have my camera stand with me. Um, I was only for work, at work about a day and a half this past week. I came down with a pretty good cold and I felt fine. But you, when you work at a hospital, people get nervous when you're walking around sneezing and coughing and... Must be COVID, right? Well, it wasn't COVID. It's just a head cold. Um, it wasn't even the flu because I felt fine. But um, yeah, they all agreed I should stay home. So okay, I did. Um, so that means I didn't. There wasn't a whole lot done at work this week. Um, what was done uh, was as a result of some strange indications I saw in my email uh, beginning last week. Um, there's a couple of switches that have uh, bad fiber pairs going to them. I've talked about them in the past. Um, and those switches will kind of bounce up and down every once in a while until the core switch disables them due to a link flap condition. Uh, disables those ports. And so that's pretty normal. I'll see that over the, the weekend until we can get those fiber pairs fixed and figure out where the problem is. It's going to do that. Um, but then I saw some other switches doing it. Then I saw a whole lot of other switches doing it, and I started getting nervous. But my phone wasn't ringing, nobody called, and I was on call, so they would have called. So whatever it was that was causing these uh, switches to go up and down wasn't affecting network traffic. So they weren't really going up or down. Um, so I looked into the, the logs of my man management software, or my monitoring software, Intermapper, and it was basically just saying, we're losing SNMP contact. Okay, well, let me crank open an intermapper and, and just take a look at things. And it was kind of weird because here I got some printouts of intermapper and they're done on my, my junky home printer. So the, the uh, quality isn't that great. So I went into intermapper and sure enough, you know, it's showing, um, you know, some switches are, are saying when they're, you see them orange like this, it just means there's something wrong. So when I click on them and say, you know, status, it says no SNMP v3 uh, response. So, and it'll just, it'll just flash a whole bunch of different, they'll, they'll flash on, they'll, they'll go no SNMP, SNMP v3 response, and then come right back to responding, turn green again, orange, green, orange, green, all over the place on this side, all of them downstream of this core switch right here. So I thought, Huh, that's weird. So I zoomed out and checked the, the rest of the network and what the other core switches, you can see everything on that side is green. They aren't going up and down. There's no problem with SNMP v3 at all. So, okay, we're gonna concentrate on this guy right here. So well, I did two things. I called uh, the people that make Intermapper, which is Fortra Systems uh, F-O-R-T-R-A, if you're interested in looking them up. So I called them and said, hey, I'm seeing uh, switches go up and down all the time on uh, on Intermapper. And I usually it takes them a day or two to get back. They got back that day, which I found odd. And the guy says, hey, can we, uh, this was last Monday. He says, hey, can we have a, um, a share session tomorrow? You know, uh, share your screen and take a look at things. And by this time, I'm already sneezing and coughing pretty good. So I said, oh, okay, sure. 
So we, we booked something for the next day. And as everything was also happening downstream of this particular switch, I went ahead and opened a case with Extreme and uh, pulled a uh, show full tech. Um, there's show tech and there's show full tech and they always want to show full tech. So I did a show full tech on it, sent it to them. I did it on all four core switches. And I said, hey, I'm seeing uh, switches go on and offline uh, downstream of this switch. I wonder if you could help me check things out. And uh, so they said, oh, yeah, we'll take a look at it and we'll get back to you. Because what I was worried about, when I usually when I see stuff like this, which is the last time this happened, is we had a loop in the network. And um, I've already forgotten how to find a loop in the network. So if you guys want to remind me down in the comments below, that's great. Otherwise, I have to learn it all over again. Because, oh, I probably got notes somewhere. I just got to find the notes. Um, but... Tell me how you would find a loop, if there was, in fact, a loop. So, that was my, that was my, not my first thought, my second thought. Oh, maybe there's a loop out there. So, I thought Extreme might see that in the show tech, and that would make things easier. Well, they didn't. What they kept uh, concentrating on, well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. First things first. So, the, <laughs> that was the Monday that I called these two in. So Tuesday night, I'm obsessing over this and wondering, oh man, do I have a loop in the network somewhere? And I couldn't sleep. So I woke up super early and finally ended up just getting up and driving into work. It's like 4 a.m. I got to work at 4. And I was looking around at things and looking, couldn't find anything. Um, I didn't really look for the loop too much. But anyway, the uh, the appointment popped up and I got on the the thing with Intermapper and uh, started trying to explain to him what was going on and apparently it was a little too much. He kept telling me, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to, I need to check these things one at a time. And uh, so we, we checked out what he wanted to look at and he was really, he just kept wanting to look at the version number and version. Number. Oh, you get one of these guys that's telling me, oh, I got to upgrade to the latest one before you can even help me, help me troubleshoot this. Because that's what I'm finding a lot lately, is these guys, they won't even help you troubleshoot anything. And I'm not just talking Intermapper. I'm talking Extreme, Palo Alto. They don't want to help you troubleshoot unless you are on the latest version of the software. Well, they come out with new versions of the software every two or three weeks. Um, I'm one guy. I can't, I would be spending 90% of my time doing upgrades, and I just can't do that especially with the core networks um because you know i i agree this is not the best architecture but it is what it is you know with extreme if i upgrade the software on this switch now these guys down here are all fine because they're cross connected to other core switches everything on these two legs out so all of this those will go down while I'm doing the upgrade on that this switch over here. So I can't just upgrade these things every six weeks or whenever they come out with a new thing because we can't we can't take everybody down every six weeks. It's a hospital. Now this part out here is mostly engineering, but who keeps the hospital running? Engineering. And one of these things way out here is some of our uh, we have connections in the county jail for dispensing medications and they're 24 seven down there. You know, there's no office hours at the jail. <laughs> they have guests all the time. Um, so, okay. That little rant is over, but you, yeah, you see what I'm saying? I can't, I can't upgrade these things as often as the vendors would like. So I always, you could tell, I get perturbed when the first thing they tell me is, are you running the latest version of our software? Of course not. So anyway, that's where I thought this guy was going. Well, you need to upgrade the latest version, and then we'll then we'll take another look. But he didn't say that. What he did say was, um, after I explained everything, and after he looked at whatever he wanted to look at, he said, "I'll, I'll tell you. I, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I, sh I I will tell you that we are we are tracking a new bug, and this might be part of that new bug." Which is odd because it's a new bug that just showed up 
last week. So by new bug, he must mean Microsoft must have released an update that broke something in Intermapper. So that's my guess. So I don't know. That's just, you know, after I've worked with this stuff for so many years, that's my guess. But, um, you know, I've, I've been wrong before and I could be wrong again about this. So that was the Intermapper call. Um, and then right after that call, I had a call with Extreme. Because I wanted to economize my, my meetings because I'm getting pretty, <laughs> sneezing and coughing pretty good by this time. And I needed to go home. So then I got on the phone with Extreme, which was supposed to be 30 minutes, ended up being an hour and a half. Um, so we got on, we started going into that switch, um, this guy, and we started looking at some of the other switches, some of the ones that were staying, some of them are staying up, but some of them are just bouncing up and down. We went into both, couldn't find anything in those, we checked the logs. And the only thing they honed in on and this core switch, and they kept obsessing about it, was this um, the extreme network management software we use, which is called the XIQ Site Edition. Um, XIQ had an old user defined that it was using to go out and, um, uh, what am I trying to say, pull the switch. So there's like a default SNMP user account that it was using. And this guy was saying, I, I don't know what that is. So we cleaned up the SNMP v3 config in that switch. And it was still, the, those things were still showing up in the log. Actually, it wasn't showing up in the log on this guy. It was showing up in the log on uh, XIQ, SE, NetSite. You old OG extreme guys will know when I say NetSite. Um, and I still call it NetSite, but it's uh, XIQ. Um, so we tried to um, get rid of the uh, config out of that, and it wasn't, we couldn't get rid of the uh, the user, the SNMP user. And so we tried rebooting and nothing. So <laughs> the extreme being extreme, just like every other vendor in the world, is like, well, what version are you running? Oh, here we go. Because Extreme is famous for this. The very first question they ask you is, are you running our latest firmware? And if you haven't, well, before we proceed, we recommend you upgrade because that gets rid of a lot of problems. Yeah, that's called falling back and punt. They're, they're just gonna punt the problem and say, hopefully that this, they're hoping it's a firmware bug, but I don't know. So I think I, it, I think, I think it probably is a firmware bug. I don't think it's a loop. Uh, I'm just not sure where the firmware bug is right now. So the other thing that came out of that is they're also recommending, and I know I need to, I just don't want to, um, but it does need to be done, is we have not upgraded our the firmware in our cores in some time, nor rebooted them. Well, that's not true. They were rebooted last year unintentionally <laughs> when the power went out. Um, anyway, so they're, they're recommending that I upgrade the firmware and the core switches as well. And I was like, yeah, I know I need to, um, because we're not going to upgrade that every six months or even every year. It's going to be every couple of years when we do that. So anyway, that was my short day and a half work week. Um, you know, it could still be a loop. So, you got any ideas on how I can look for a loop? Put them in the comments. Um, be happy to, to entertain that. Otherwise, I will go back through my notes and see what I did last time I had to find a loop. Because I know I made a video on, you know, finding loops. Geez, probably a year or two ago. And uh, so maybe I could go back and watch my own video, huh? <laughs> so... Anyway, guys, that's all I got for this week. Um, thanks for the comments. Keep them coming. Uh, keep prayer requests coming. I do I do pray for you guys. I pray for everybody. Um, because I couldn't do this without God. I couldn't do this without my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the uh, fact is, nobody could do anything without God. So, And we don't have any hope without Jesus Christ. So... 
I hope you guys have a great week. We had a good Thanksgiving holiday here, even though I was coughing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I hope you guys are all thankful for everything you have. We'll see you all next week. God bless, guys.